Salt is the ingredient which we eat all our lives. It is hard to imagine food without salt as it is so strongly associated with taste. Let's understand more about the why, how and what of salt and its effects on our food and body. With so much variety out in the markets, let's also see how we can figure out which one to choose based on our needs. I'm going to share with you what I have learned about salt on my quest for good health. Why do we need salt? The chemical formula of salt is NaCl, approximately 40% sodium and 60% chloride. We are talking about chemistry because our body is a chemical factory and it reacts to any other chemical we intake. Salt is an essential nutrient which our body cannot produce on its own. Sodium and chloride are electrolytes our body needs along with other electrolytes such as potassium, calcium, etc. Ayurveda also mentions the uses of different types of salts in food and medicine. Why do we need electrolytes? 70% of our body is water. Electrolytes help keep the fluid balance in and out of our body cells. It also controls the pressure and volume of the blood. You would have already known that doctors have been telling us to cut down on salt when there are increased levels of blood pressure. Electrolytes also help regulate nerve and muscle function. When we work out, our body loses sodium with sweat and gets dehydrated and that is when we experience muscle cramps because we are running low on sodium. Patients are also given salt in the form of saline. If we need salt in our body and we have to take it externally, then how did people survive when there was no salt? That is because salt is not the only source. Most of the fruits, vegetables and seafood we eat contain salt naturally. For example, you will have to add less salt while cooking leafy vegetables because they naturally contain salt. In fact, naturopathy does not support salt and they cure diseases with a natural healthy diet. Salt enhances the flavor, texture and color of the food. Next time when you're cooking, notice that the texture and color of the food changes with the addition of salt and it also starts smelling good. If it was not for salt, we would not be able to eat so many vegetables in their raw form. Best example is salad, which means salted greens. Salt also acts as natural preservative. It reduces water and minimizes the microbial growth and chemical reactions. Most common use of salt as a preservative in our household is the addition of salt to tamarind to increase shelf life. How is salt processed? Salt has been in use for centuries and also made history. We obtain salt from sea water, lakes and salt mines. That is why the names sea salt, lake salt and rock salt. Let's look into the primary methods of making salts. Solar evaporation. It is one of the oldest methods in which salt is made by filtering sea water and evaporating under the sun. It undergoes minimum processing because of which the minerals and nutrients are retained. As it is made left out in open under the sun for a number of days, it contains some impurities. Vacuum evaporated. Salt water or brine is purified and vacuum evaporated which undergoes processing and in some cases fortification. Salt mining. Salt is extracted from salt mines which was once seabed. Let's see the difference between a natural and processed salts. Natural salt is not pure white, never free-flowing and absorbs water. Salt has different flavors based on how it is formed because naturally obtained salt contains minerals and micronutrients obtained from that place. Processed salt. Salt naturally harvested from seawater is collected and processed in industries and transformed into a commercial product. Raw sea salt is washed multiple times and then dried. During this process, the nutrients are lost along with the impurities. The salt is then crushed and filtered to get different sizes of salt. The sizes of salt are known as kosher, which is a raw form without additives. Medium grain salt, which is used for water softening, etc. And the grain salt, which is commonly used for cooking, and add it to salt shakers. To make the salt white and free flowing, chemicals are added during processing. The bleaching process makes the salt white and the anti-caking agent makes the salt free flowing. 
Salt is also fortified with iodine to prevent iodine deficiency disorders, IDD, which is enforced by the government. It was chosen to be added to salt as it goes well with it and is commonly used every day. Let's look into what we have in processed and natural salts. Salt contains around 98% of sodium chloride and up to 2% of chemicals or nutrients depending on if it is natural or processed. In processed salt, we find chemicals such as stabilizer used to retain water during processing and storage, anti-caking agents like INS551 or INS536 added to prevent lumping in salt, potassium iodate for iodine fortification, ferrous fumarate for iron fortification, ferrocyanide anti-caking agent, aluminium silicate to prevent moisture, potassium chloride as substitute to salt which reduces the sodium content etc. The chemicals added to keep the salt free flowing intervene with the electrolyte process in our body which is not good. Coming to fortified iodine, salt and iodine are different elements for different needs of the body. Only a tablespoon of iodine is needed in the lifetime of a person but as our body does not have the storage mechanism it has to be supplied on a daily basis. Daily recommended intake of iodine is 150 mcg whereas daily recommended intake of salt by WHO is less than 5 grams per day. 1 gram of iodized salt contains 20 micrograms of iodine. Having 5 grams of salt per day will only fulfill the bare minimum required. If you increase the intake of salt to fulfill iodine requirement, it leads to other problems. And the iodine added to salt is lab made. However, the average amount consumed by a person is about 11 grams per day. According to American Heart Association, in our body, more than 70% of salt comes from processed and restaurant food. 10% added while cooking or eating and 15% occurs naturally. Our daily level of sodium depends on how much natural or how much processed food we eat. Medicines also have sodium content. We have to keep in mind that the salt used in outside food is not iodized. The smiling sun symbol on the packaging of salt we buy indicates that the salt is iodized. At home, if we are using iodized salt, according to the percentages, only 10% iodized salt is consumed which is like 0.5 grams per day, which gives 10 micrograms of iodine. This makes it clear that solely depending on iodized salt does not solve the problem. Consuming iodine-rich homemade and natural food instead of packaged and processed food can be of help. When it comes to natural salts, they contain around 98% of sodium and up to 2% of nutrients which are calcium, potassium, sulfur, magnesium, phosphorus, iodine, manganese, copper and zinc. Salt naturally comes with iodine but in low quantities. If you consume naturally harvested sea salt with impurities, your body can easily get rid of those rather than the chemicals added in the process. The other impurities in salt also include plastic nanoparticles. According to an article of National Geographic, new research shows microplastics in 90% of the table salt brands and the average adult consumes approximately 2000 microplastics per year through salt. Unlike the traditional way, if the salt farms use plastic trays for evaporation of seawater under the hot sun, that also adds up. This is where the rock salt comes into picture, which is extracted from salt mines formed ages ago, when the environment was free of plastics and chemicals. It does not mean that it is 100% plastic free, as it is again stored, transported and sold in plastic packages. These are also high in price. Taking everything into account, for day-to-day -day use, traditionally harvested sea salt should be good enough when balanced with a natural iron-rich healthy diet. Thank you for watching.